Now in the next aerobic isometric or aerobic training system that I do is a five minute isometric hold. Um, it's basically a two. I do this two days a week. You could do it three. Uh, local. Basically, what it does is it builds in a local aerobic endurance. Now, many people uh, know there's coaches out there that do five minute isometric holds. Some claim they invented it. I found it as early as 1960 on the uh, Russian head Russian high jump coach in the Soviet Union who is actually above Yuri Verkashansky. Yuri Verkashansky, famous sports scientist, was number two um, below him for a long period of time. Now, um, basically it restricts blood flows to muscles, creates some level of a hypoxia environment because the muscles are under tension. Now, what I was able to do was take a device and measure at what loads I could keep the muscles oxygenated and not shift into a too hypoxic environment where it created a lactate threshold or they created a local lactate effect. And that was about 30% of your load. So if your bench press was, uh, or if your max uh, dumbbell bench was 100 pounds, you'd be using 30 pounds. Okay, um, and this still allows oxygen to leak into the muscle. Now, what we found when I started doing this was a tissue remodeling effect. The fascia gets stretched, allows athletes to hold positions, and what we saw was posture changes in our athletes, and they were able to get into better positions. Um, so, and the big thing is, I do mine where I'm actually just trying to build the muscle of the local, of the muscle being used. So, if it's a bench press, then it's uh i'm just trying to use the bench muscles uh some people use some variations of this but if you want to download um you can click on the link go to my blog download the isometric uh circuit and then basically what you'll be able to do is see how the concepts use so essentially it's a, fi a dumbbell bench press for five minutes this athlete whose bench was 200 would uh basically use 20s uh, this is actually their dumbbell or their bench press max and the sheet will if you download it will give you all their maxes and place them in there so um, enough of that and um, so then the next one is kind of a favorite by many people it's called escalating density training uh, originally started by Charles Staley I should have put his name in I'm sorry again it's Charles Staley his 50% um, basically, but I did a modification and I use 50% of your 1RM and I do singles. So if your max is 300, you put uh, 50 on the, uh, 150 on the bench press. And if your max is 400 on the squat, you'll put 200 on the squat. And you'll do some opposing movements together. So basically, you can go actually even five to eight minutes back and forth. And what happens is... Um, I tell people, if, let's say you use a back squat and a bench press, and actually what transpires is you are able to go back and forth with between bench press and back squat for five to eight minutes, and your heart rate gets to 160, 150, even maybe even 170 sometimes, um, and the biggest thing is uh, linemen, world-class throwers, uh, NFL linemen, have grown to like this to build their work capacity. Um, you can download the sheet, just click on the thing. And But the biggest thing is that people don't understand, if your heartbeat's going 160 for eight, for four, you do four different movements, uh, four different sets of eight minutes, let's say, you have 32 minutes of your heart rate going at 160 versus, let's say you're going to jog on eight, eight minute intervals for that, period of time the linemen the world-class shot putters are going to hate it but they all actually do this and get in great aerobic shape now remember this is the foundational and base movements for you to be able to do more singles and train harder and resist stress okay and this is very effective for power sport athletes to train aerobically okay the next one's super endurance you can click on it get sample workouts it's essentially a, a light bodybuilding series of workouts you can modify it there's nothing special about the the exercise chosen um you can click on there but just keep your heart rate probably 110 120 to 170 but you remember you're staying in the aerobic zone you can also do the the breath holding during this period of time okay it's simple but effective
Now, the next method we'll use is, I call it metabolic running, um, aerobic base injury prevention running. You can read about it, click here, read about it on my blog. Uh, let me give you a brief overview of how I stumbled upon this. I first did straight ahead jogging in my arena, and I just went around the whole arena. Uh, I'm pointing at these like they're pillars, I guess. And but but I held the athletes at about 110 beats per minute on their heart rate. So then what we did is then we implemented the same pace that we did at 110, and all we did was shuffle, you know, skip, backward skip. We didn't sprint. We this was a completely held jog, karaoke, shuffle again, backwards jog, and the heart rate goes to 170 beats per minute. We did this whole thing barefoot, and we were able to get our heart rates up to at the high end of the aerobic zone. I actually had to slow them down so they didn't cross lactate threshold. Did about 8 to 10 minutes of this training, and it was pretty phenomenal in regards to the effectiveness that we did and uh, in regards to building aerobic base. Now, what we often did here was after all the aerobic lifting that... So this was conditioning after the aerobic lift. We would basically do this metabolic injury prevention running. And after a contralateral circuit, or whatever it may be, but again, we just kept the heart rate between 110 and 170. What transpired also is you could do is if you wanted to appease some sport coaches, you could make this a the same thing and then add a, a light sled push here if you're a football player, um, some specific drills to the sports. This could be just a general circuit, keeping uh, you moving and uh, not going too hard because, again, you don't want to cross that 170. And we'd also do it, of course, with our tape. Um, our uh, mouth taped shut. So applying an aerobic training and biking uh, during for biking, but applying it, I often do like biking. Why? Because it doesn't beat your legs up. I often found that the biking is very, very effective um, for just flushing out blood and moving over time. So. Um, over jogging let's say because there's some pounding involved now I use aerobic training on all my light weeks uh, or when the athletes overtrained on a daily training response so maybe they're a little overtrained I may if it's not a Friday if it's early in the week I'll do a default aerobic day and come back <laughs> essentially light bodybuilding is also aerobic based training and it helps with recovery um, I've also found that healing at uh, um, some injuries seem to heal faster if I can do aerobic training with the heart rate for uh, being held at about 130. It's it's essentially where the most efficient zone is in regards, at least in the young athletes, in regards to where your heart's working super efficiently and you get maximum blood flow. Now, the other thing that you can do for aerobic training in regards to um, recovery is... I've gotten maximal results out of a post-practice walking, okay? And essentially, though, it has to be about two hours out from your practice minimum to get an effect. So let's say you go through practice and you go for a 20-minute walk. I, I, I don't see any recovery effects from that. There may be some, but it's not maximal. So it's not that beneficial. So ultimately, I will... Uh, have my athletes go through practice then somewhere in the two to six hours post practice go for a nice walk with your mouth closed breathing through your nose um one the one big thing is people realize again don't get over get over the concept that the aerobic training is always done uh on the bike or or with these circuits let's say on monday you did heavy squats and bench and then um that's what you had planned, but your coach said, hey, we're really tired. We need to adjust. You can keep the same workout. You just go light squats, add more reps, and reduce the rest periods. It's the same thing. It's just an aerobic training day. This is an alactic training day. This is an aerobic day. If you go lighter weight, add more reps with a little or less rest, keep your heart rate between 110 and 170. Um, remember, um, keep applying more volume during this uh, aerobic block. So when I say that, the, the volume your freshmen will do and your seniors is, is really different. 
um, except on download weeks. On download weeks, I keep the volume pretty, pretty decently low. Not too low, but they're usually practicing on a download week. Um, keep in mind that I increase heart rate, keep heart rate about 130 to 110 in saunas and so forth, which is an aerobic training effect. The other thing that you can do is, is actually put a bunch of clothes on when you would do this during a download week. Um, or you can add clothes, uh, uh, large amounts of clothes, uh, you know, put on stocking caps and gloves. You actually end up doing less work and getting your heart rate up there in the, uh, 170 zone so it's kind of a thermal dynamic effect your body's trying to cool itself your heart's working a lot but your the rest of your body's not working as much now um the big thing about applying it too is the maintenance of the aerobic capacity youth hold it for a very long time i find that young athletes seem to hold it so in early high school um college they will too uh in season it uh, helps maintain aerobic capacity by practicing so you don't have to do aerobic training all the time because when you're in season you get your mainly your aerobic capacity hopefully by having a good practice plans um i download to be honest with you every two to three weeks in season um three to four is possible is also possible misspelling there but you know ultimately i go about every two weeks so i train hard for two weeks and i mean i train hard and then I download on the third week. I will adjust that. I might go one week hard, one week download, one week hard, one download, depending on the schedule. But there's always variation. If I'm nervous about where they're at, I will always download in default. Um, when applying this uh, aerobic-based concepts to high school, I'd start at the start of training camp. In transition periods, I would do it from indoor to outdoor track. Uh, one sport to another, I would I would recircle back and do this, um, and then at the beginning of the off season training program. And again, this is for high school. Applying it to college, I think uh, the start of training camp. Uh, again, you come in, you're not trying to beat these kids up. Uh, keeps them in touch with the weight room in transition periods, like uh, let's say a hockey program over the middle of Christmas break. When they when they come back, they will go over, they will readdress the, in the aerobic training, and then make a push for the end of the season. The start of new training blocks at the beginning of the off season is another time I will do it. Um, at the very beginning of the block of the off season. Next, we'll talk about proper breathing.